Welcome to another video. My name is Carly. I'm a dietitian and trainer talking about all things fitness and nutrition. For today's video, I'm going to talk about macros and the million dollar question, do you have to count macros in order to see progress with your fitness or nutrition related goals? So I feel like this is a very common topic in the fitness world and there are so many misconceptions and just misinformation out there about counting macros. So I'm gonna break this down from a dietitian's perspective, focusing on science. I'll go into just an overview of what macros are if you're not familiar with them. And then I'll talk about why people count them what are the benefits? What are some downfalls? And then again, I'll answer the million dollar question. Do you have to count macros in order to see progress? So with that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. So starting off with what are macros? So macros, also known as macronutrients, are the nutrients that the body needs in large amounts to function properly. So they are essential nutrients that provide the body with energy and needed for things like the metabolism, muscle repair, and much more. So on the other hand, micronutrients are vitamins and minerals that are needed in smaller quantities that are divided into several groups. Today, I'm just going to focus on macros, but I wanted to just mention that briefly. So the types of macros are carbohydrates, protein, fat, and water. Each type of macro has several benefits, so I'll briefly walk through a summary of each benefit, starting with carbohydrates. So carbs are the body's primary source of fuel. They provide energy for the muscles and the central nervous system during exercise. Each gram of carbohydrate has four calories, and the AMDR recommendation range for carbs are between 45 to 65% of total calories per day. So this range suggests a healthy diet should include 45 to 65% of overall calorie intake of carbohydrates. Moving to protein, protein is essential for many things like tissue structure, organs, muscle repair, hair, skin, nails, bones, tendons, etc. So protein has about four calories per gram, and the overall guidelines for the AMDR recommendations are between 10 to 35% of overall calories. So I know that kind of sounds like a large range for protein, but I'll get into that later. Again, the guidelines are 10 to 35%. Fat is the third macronutrient, which also has benefits, including brain function and the absorption of different vitamins. So fat has nine calories per gram, and the AMDR recommendations for percentage is between 20 to 35% of overall calories. The last macronutrient is water. We all know the benefits of drinking water, so I'm not gonna get into that right now, but again, those are the macro ranges, carbs 45 to 65%, protein 10 to 35%, and then fat 20 to 35%. So again, you'll notice that these ranges are pretty large. But this is just, again, what would be considered a healthy diet or a diet where it has all it needs from each macro to function properly. So now that we have that overview, I am going to transition into more of like the why people pay attention in the fitness world. So why do people pay attention in the fitness world? There are several reasons why. People might pay attention to counting macros, but it's specifically common when people are trying to change their physique. So either trying to lose weight, gain weight, build muscle, or just be in a, a maintenance with your weight. So before I get into the why, it's important to understand the science of energy and weight loss. So first of all, if you listen to any of my other previous podcast episodes, you'll know that weight loss is a very complex topic. There is so much more that can go into it and just the science of how energy balance works. So again, the metabolism is complex and there's so many other factors that might impact weight loss or weight gain. Um, but again, the overall general guidance is energy balance or calorie balance. So we all have what we call a basal metabolic rate, which is the energy or calories that the body burns by just existing. This is also known as your resting metabolic rate. So things like body size, lean muscle tissue, age, weight, 
height, genetics, all of those things may impact this number. So without activity, this is the number of calories the body needs to maintain its current weight. So notice that I said current because this number changes again based off of all of the factors that I just listed. Um, so in addition to basal metabolic rate, physical activity or exercise will play a role as well. So before I keep explaining, I just wanna note that I hate getting caught up in specific numbers. There is no need to be like so specific or obsessive with these numbers. I don't recommend that at all, but I think I'm just overall trying to explain the big picture of how this works for each individual. So again, physical activity will play a role. I would consider physical activity to be like walking throughout the day, cleaning, um, anything that is active during your job, anything that's causing your body to move, and then exercise is obviously more like organized and more intense. So both physical activity and exercise are burning energy. So that average number is what is added on top of the BMR to get the overall energy balance to maintain an individual's current weight. So now if we're moving into weight loss or weight gain, for weight loss, we would be in a deficit of that number, in some sort of deficit. And then again, for weight gain, we'd be in some sort of surplus. So again, thinking of this as like an energy scale. So going back into the fitness world, people may pay attention in some ways to calories to align with their specific needs and goals. Again, a calorie deficit or a surplus for muscle gain or gaining weight. Um, macros will play into that by getting really specific on which macronutrient or how many grams per macronutrient is making up your over calorie, overall calorie intake. So going back again to those ranges, 45 to 65% of carbs, 10 to 35 of protein, 20 to 35 of fat, people will set a goal for grams of each macro that will make up their total calorie needs. So I talked about how each macro has, again, a specific number of calories. This is how that number is calculated. So when you are counting macros, you are also counting calories. You're just being very specific again in each gram of specific macro that you're consuming in a day. On the other hand, it's really common um, to, for people to count calories in general without paying attention to specific macros, or again, just having like a protein goal or just using those AMDR recommendations as a reference. Again, nutrition is not one size fits all. There is no right or wrong way to go about it. There are several approaches. Um, but again, that's why it's commonly used in the fitness world to help with energy balance targeting a number for each specific macro. So if you're still with me at this point, shout out to you. Now that we have the understanding of like the very brief science, I'm gonna get into the benefits and the downfalls. So starting with the benefits, when it comes to weight loss or muscle gain or weight maintenance, a good balance of macros helps to make this easier by helping with overall hunger. Um, it also helps with energy levels, muscle repair, et cetera. So if you're trying to lose weight, having a good macro balance is really helpful to make weight loss achievable and sustainable. I like to give the example of like, say your overall calorie goal is 2000 calories. I'm just throwing that number out there. Um, but if you are consuming 2000 calories, primarily of like refined sugar, it's gonna make you feel a lot different than consuming 2000 calories worth of like lean protein and whole grains. So in addition, paying attention to getting adequate protein is always really important when focusing on weight loss. Um, it's, in, it's counting calories, again, according to your specific needs, but going even deeper in the type of calories with, with each macronutrient that you're consuming. So the benefits may be like ensuring, again, you're eating a balanced diet that is sustainable according to your current needs to meet your specific fitness or nutrition-related goals. Moving into the downfalls. So what are the downfalls of counting macros? I think the biggest downfall that I've seen is it, it just can be very time consuming and obsessive. I think counting anything, focusing on numbers diligently for some people can be time consuming and again, obsessive. So I've said this a million times, I'll say it again, but everyone is very different when it comes to nutrition approaches and what works for them. Some people may absolutely thrive 
counting macros or counting calories and they get the hang of it and they love it, other people may find it restricting and hard to maintain. So again, same thing here. There's no right or wrong way. Everybody has to look at this from an individual perspective. Um, I think as a dietitian, you really, again, meet people where they're at. So what works for me does not matter when I'm working with somebody else. Again, the focus is what works best for your mental health and thinking about what you can sustain the long term. So if there was one way to go about nutrition again, everyone or nobody would struggle. Everybody would have it figured out. Dietitians wouldn't be needed. So if you are someone who counts macros and you love that, I also love that for you. If you're somebody who, again, it's just not sustainable and you feel like it doesn't make your life easier and you feel like you end up in that cycle of burnout, then I highly would not recommend it for you. So again, the downfalls may be that it, become, it can become an unhealthy obsession where people get caught up in specific numbers where it's negatively impacting your mental health. I also wanna point out the recommended macro ranges that I mentioned earlier. I have in the past experienced people getting really stressed out if they're like a couple of grams over for carbs or like five grams short of protein and they feel like they need to make their macro goal and it's kind of hard to find like food combinations where you can do that. Um, honestly, if you are a few grams over or under for each macro, it is not detrimental whatsoever. When you're really looking at the big picture, a couple grams here or there are not going to make a huge difference in the short term. So it's important to keep that in mind if, again, you feel like it's becoming obsessive. Finally, I'm gonna conclude with the million dollar question. Do you need to count macros to see progress? So. Short answer, absolutely not. However, I'm gonna explain this the best as I can. So I talked about the science of nutrition and how energy balance works. So technically, if we're thinking on broad terms, based off of science, if you're trying to lose weight, you do need to be in some sort of calorie deficit. If you're trying to gain weight, you have to be in some sort of calorie surplus. And if you want to maintain your weight, again, you do need to be in some sort of calorie maintenance. Again. Like I said this in the beginning, there are so many other things that can impact like weight loss or weight gain. However, just talking about broad terms here. So yes, that does need to happen. However, there are several approaches to create that calorie deficit or surplus. So people might, again, count calories or macros to create that, or they may start off with adding certain things to their current diet, like exercise. So keeping what they're currently doing with their, their nutrition, but then adding an exercise each week to create that calorie deficit from what they're doing. They might focus on generally adding more whole foods and not necessarily paying attention to calories, but just like adding more protein and fiber to create more sat satiety and to curb hunger. So again, those are just a few examples of many on how a calorie deficit can be created. I think this is where you have to really look into the future and really focus on the approach. I think people underestimate how important the actual approach is when we're talking about sustainability and like reaching your goals and sustaining them long term. So it goes back to the hamster wheel cycle of like fad diets, doing them, seeing progress in the beginning and then going back to square one. So when we're talking about the approach, you really wanna look into the future. I always tell people, look at yourself for months in advance. Do you still see yourself being able to sustain this routine where you feel excited about it, you feel like it may be hard some days, everything when it comes to like reaching goals requires some sort of discipline. But again, um, you see yourself not getting to that extreme burnout where like you can no longer go forward. So if you feel like you're, again, starting to compare yourself to other people or what other people are doing, I highly encourage you to take a second, focus back on yourself, see what works best for you, see what aligns with your mental health, with your lifestyle, again, what you've tried in the past of what you know you can sustain and focus on those things. Talking about my personal journey, I have not counted a calorie for a few years. I used to diligently count calories for years and now I solely rely on intuitive eating, which is another amazing topic, but that is personally how I create a calorie maintenance and it works perfectly for me. Um, again, that's just really what works for me. Counting calories worked for me for the years that I did it. And now I transitioned into something that is better for my mental health and is sustainable. But again, going back to what I already mentioned, if you are somebody that 
likes counting calories and it works, keep doing it, focus on you. Um, again, I don't personally count a single calorie. I focus on whole foods and balance with other foods that you would consider like unhealthy. And I have a very consistent like fitness related schedule and what works for me. So um, I think intuitive eating is a process to learn, but again, it can be done to reach your goals. I personally, again, feel like I'm reaching my goals in the same way, if not more right now than I was when I was counting calories because I've like taken the time to, again, create that sustainable routine for myself that works the best for my mental health. So to put this full picture, again, thinking about what you see yourself sustaining long-term that may require some action and discipline in the beginning. You may have to try a few things to take a couple steps back before you go forward until you kind of find again, what works best, but overall again, what sounds enjoyable and sustainable for you. Um, you may be someone who loves counting macros or you may never want to count anything again a day in your life and you wanna focus on other areas like adding things or again, other areas of nutrition that just doesn't involve numbers. So I reassure you that there is a way to meet your goals in so many different directions. You just need to find the right approach and the right information out there for you. So that is an overview of macros, what they are, why are they used in the fitness world, some downfalls, benefits, and then again, answering the question of, do you have to count macros in order to see progress? That concludes today's video. Thank you so much for listening. If you are interested in home workouts, you can visit the link in my bio for my home workout program covering all muscle groups. I have both a beginner and an advanced level for every single workout and all you need is a small space and a set of dumbbells and I guide you through the entire thing. You can also check my website. Again, the link is in my bio and in the description for some dietitian inspired recipes and for my podcast. So again, thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next video.